Hello and welcome back. In this third video of our Welly Library series, we're going to see how to load survey data into a well object. We will see how to create a well path using the location module of the Welly Library and display it on a 3D plot using matplotlib. Within well login, there are multiple depth references used to denote a position along the well bore. These include measure depth, true vertical depth, and true vertical depth sub C, and many more. Depth is one of the most important logging measurements that is acquired along the well bore. It allows for the successful completion of the well from setting of packers, casing, and perforation intervals. So just to go over the terms, measure depth or MD is the depth measured along the well bore. True vertical depth or TVD is the absolute vertical depth of the well from a specific datum, such as the sea level or the rig floor. When a well is vertical, both MD and TVD are equal to each other. But as the well becomes deviated, that TVD becomes smaller than the measured depth. Many of the last files we work with have measured depth as a reference depth, and often they do not include a TVD. So we have to calculate that using some mathematics. And the Welly library allows us to do this by loading in a survey file from a CSV file and attaching it to a Welly well object. And from that, we can generate multiple plots, such as our 2D map view of our XY location and how our Y location varies with TVD. But today, we're not going to focus on the calculations for TVD. Instead, we're going to see how we can just load that survey file into our well object and generate some plots using matplotlib. So let's go over to our Jupyter Notebook and see how we achieve this. Let's begin with importing the libraries that we will be working with. These are the Pandas library, and also the well and location modules from the Welly library. Once we have imported these, we can then load in the data. And the data that is used within this example comes from the Dutch sector of the North Sea and can be found on the NLOG website, which is linked down in the description below. To load the data, we call upon well.from underscore last, and then we pass in the location of the file and the file name. If we call upon the data well object that we have just created, we can then get a summary of the well, and we can see the well name, the location, and information about the curves contained within the file. If we want a closer look at the data contained within our well object, we can call upon data, dot data, and we can see each of the mnemonics for our curves, as well as the values. And the majority of these values are not a number or missing values, with the exception of WTBH, which does have a value in the third row. A better way to understand the data contents is to look at a well log plot. And we can call upon data.plot and then pass in an argument called extents, and then we pass in curves. And what we get back is a well log plot for all of the curves within our last file. And we can see we've got on the left, BHT, caliper, CHT, etc. We have all of these. And it can be a little bit difficult to read some of these, especially if you have a, if you have a large amount of curves within your file. But this just gives you an initial QC and an initial feel for the data. We can see what curves we have. We can see the general character of the curves and the typical ranges for the curves, as well as any potential outliers, which this one here could potentially be. So now that our data has been loaded into a well object, we can now begin to load the survey data and then attach that survey data to the well. So first, we need to load in our survey data and we'll do this using pandas. So if I do pd.read underscore csv and then pass in the location and the file name, we can then run this cell and view the contents of that. And what we get back is a pandas data frame. Within this data frame, we have measure depth, inclination, azimuth, and a calculated TVD, as well as a calculated X and Y offset. Survey data consists of measurements that have been taken at specific points along the well path, and therefore don't form continuous logging curves. So when the data is provided, it usually only contains depth, inclination, and azimuth. So in this example, we can see that we have the X and the Y offsets calculated, and we will use these later on to verify our calculation from Welly. What we need to do is prepare our data for Welly. And Welly requires the data in the form of depth, inclination, and azimuth. So we need to subset our data. And we can do that by creating a new variable called survey underscore subset and is equal to survey. And then we pass in a list of our columns. So we will take MD, INC, and ASI. So when we view that subset, we can see that we have these three columns as well as all of the rows. So currently we have a pandas data frame containing our survey data. 
had a welly well object containing our log data. So we need to join these up together or bring them into the same well object. And to do this, we can call upon our well object, followed by location, and then followed by add underscore deviation. And within the brackets, we need to pass in our, our survey subset. And then we need to add dot values so that it's just taking the values from that data frame. So once the cell has been run and the data loaded into the well object, we can check the first five rows of our survey data. And we can do this calling upon data dot location dot position. And then within square brackets, we will take the, from the first row to the fifth row. And what we get back is an array containing three columns. The first column represents the X location or the X offset. The second contains the Y location, Y offset. And the third contains the calculated TVD. If we check our second value in the TVD column, we can see that it is 89.3. Now, if we go back up to our original survey data within the pandas data frame, we can see that we have a value of 89.3. So we know that that data has been calculated correctly. And if we view the information about this function, the add deviation function, what it's requiring is our deviation data, which we've already supplied. And also, we have a method argument, which is set to MC by default. And this is our minimum curvature calculation that has been applied to our data. To make things easier with the plotting that we're going to do, we need to split out our data into individual columns from the array into their own variables. And we can do this by creating a variable called xlock and setting that to data.location.position. And then we take all rows and the first column within that array. And then we repeat this two more times so that we have a Y lock and our Z lock. And for each of these, we just need to increment the numbers by one. So if we call upon the Z lock, we can now see that we have our array data within a single variable. And we can see that we have 89.3, 142.08, and these are our results from the TBD or the Z location or Z position of the well. We can also call upon data.location.tvd to get a similar array. So now we can move on to the plotting phase of this tutorial. And the first series of plots that we're going to create are our x versus y offset, so our topographical view of the well location. And then the plots after that are going to look at how the, well, the y location varies with tvd and the x location varies with tvd. So for this, we need to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Then we set up the figure and axis object uh, is equal to plt.subplot and we set the figure size to 15 by 5. We then need to set three separate axes as we're having three separate subplots. And now in this particular tutorial, I'm going to use subplot to grid as this is one of my favorite ways of dealing with these sort of subplots. And you can find an entire video on subplot to grid on my channel. To display our data, we need to then tell matplotlib what to plot within each of these subplots. So if we set ax1.plot and then pass in our x location, followed by y location, and we will set the line width to 3. And what we can do as well is set a title so that we know which subplot is what. And to make things easier, what we can do is just copy this two more times and we just change the axis reference from for the last one from one to three. And we will set this to Y lock versus Z lock. And then we just change the title to Y location versus TVD. And then we repeat the same with axis two. But this time we change it to X lock versus Z lock. Let's correct that to a small case Z. And then we just change, and then we just change the title to TVD. And there we have our three plots. So we can see our X location versus our Y location, our X location versus TVD, and Y location versus TVD. So TVD can be a positive number or a negative number, depending on how it's calculated. As we're going to be looking with depth down below the surface, we need to invert our y-axis on AX2 and AX3 so that we have a better understanding of our well path with relation to TVD. And we can just do this by AX2 
dot invert y axis and repeat the same for ax3. And when we run that, we now have our well path in, term, in, in the correct orientation for depth. So this just gives two-dimensional representation of the well path. And we will see slightly later on how we can view this in three dimensions. To gain a, a little bit of a better understanding of where the start of the well is and where the end of the well is, because it can be a little bit confusing when looking at this data here. So for that, we need to put in a couple of markers. And we will just use AX1 dot plot and what we will do is put in our x underscore location and our y underscore location we will set the marker is equal to s which is a square color is set to black and our marker size ms we will set to 8 so what that is going to do at the moment is just plot the data as markers on our plot but we need to specify what particular value from our x and y location. So if I take position 0 and position 0 for the y location, we now have our starting point. We can duplicate this to, and then just change the numbers to minus 1 and minus 1. And we will also change the, the marker shape to a star and set it to red. And then we, we also need to specify the axis. So this is AX1 and AX1. And then we can just repeat this for each of these here. And then change and update the axis AX2. And then we change this to Z lock. And Z lock. And then AX3. And we just change this to Y location or Y lock. And then our second parameter over here is we just change that to Z. We can run this and we have updated plots and we can see what the start of our well is marked by the square and the end of our well marked by the star. And if we want, we can compare this against the original survey data. So here I have just updated the line width of our data so that we can see the lines. And I have also added in the survey data with x offset and y offset and that is the original column names within that data frame and i've done that for each of these here x offset and td y offset and td so when we run this we can see that we have the same plot as before but now we have an orange line on our plot and this is our original survey data so this confirms that the calculation that was carried out by welly is correct so the final part of this tutorial is making a 3D plot. So we can look at 2D plots, but to get a real understanding of the well path in three dimensions, we can create a 3D plot using matplotlib. And to do that, we need to create some continuous data. So I'm going to create a new variable called location data, and we're going to use data.location.trajectory. And what this is doing is it's going to create a regularly sampled well trajectory or a well path. And this is using the well location data that we have previously loaded. By default, the points is set to 1000, but we can change that and increase the number to 2000 or even 3000, depending on how many points you want to create. If elevation is set to true, then the values will be positive upward. And the main argument that we need to pass in is our datum. And this is where we pass in the well location and the X and Y coordinates for that well. So here above, I've got the location from the well header. We can see that we've got 589075 by 59635534. And we can pass these in as our X and our Y location. And we can also pass in our elevation, which is our Kelly version in this case, which is 47.5 meters. So we can run that. And then as before, we can create individual variables for our location data. So our X's, our Y's, and our Z's. And when we view the Z's, we can now see that we have a continuous array with about a, with a thousand points of our data. We can create a simple 2D map plot of our data by plot plotting our X's and Y's against each other, just to be sure that our data has been plotted correctly. But when we run this, what you'll see is we have the same path as before in our previous plot, but 
our x location and our y location is now updated relative to the well location that we have set up here. So to move on to the 3D plot, we need to import MPAL or Matplotlib toolkits, import 3D, and import the Axis 3D module. And this allows us to work with 3D plots. But first, if you are in Jupyter Notebooks, we need to use a magic command to allow us to work with the widget in an interactive way. If we don't, we then just have a simple graphic that is orientated in a certain position that we can't interactively change. So we need to call upon um, percentage sign matplotlib widget. So if this is the first time you're activating this, you may need to refresh your browser to see this working. So the Wiley library does come with its own 3D plot, so we don't have to set anything up. But when we run this, we can see that it is set to the X position and the Y position within our original data. However, that is not quite what we want. We want to see our X and Y coordinates. So we need to create a, a slightly different plot. And we can do that by using a custom plot. So to plot our data in 3D with a custom plot, we can call upon AX is equal to PLT.AXES. And we set the projection method is equal to 3D. We then call upon ax.plot3d to tell it that we want a 3D axis, and we then pass in our x's, our y's, and our z's, as well as a line width argument, which we will set to 10. We then set our, our z limit, or our z axis, so that it goes from the shallowest measurement at the top to the deepest measurement at the bottom. And we can do that by calling ax.setzlim, and then we pass in 3000, which is our deepest depth, and 0, which is our shallowest depth. So when we run that, we then get back our interactive figure. And we can move around this very easily, and we can get a better idea of our well path. So rather than creating three separate plots in two dimensions, we now can move this around to gain a better understanding of our well path. And in a future video, I will show you how to plot well data along this well path so we can see variations as well as formation boundaries. If you have enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit that like button down below and also click on that subscribe button and hit that notification bell if you want to see more content from this channel. If you want to see the entire Welly series, then this playlist up here is where you should go. And also be sure to check this video out down here if you want to see one of my other videos on my YouTube channel focusing on well log data and Python. So thanks for watching and until next time, Bye for now.